Hoffman. How are you this fine Sunday? Amazing. <laughs> so lively this morning. It's insane. I, you, contain, guys, contain yourself. It's just me. Um, my name is Chris. Just want to make a few announcements here before we get started. Uh, if you need to use the restroom at any time, it's back through that door and to the left. If you get lost, never fret. TJ will guide you. He's back there. Lakers shirt on. You can't miss him. Um, we will be having a fellowship, as you know, if you've attended the church before. Uh, if you have a question or comment, just raise your hand. I will bring you a mic, or Samuel will bring you a mic. And if you're holding the mic, please hold it in the way that I'm, I'm holding it. Not too far away, not too close, just so everyone can hear you clearly uh, here in the church, as well as the complainers uh, in the live chat and who are watching at home. They love to complain. Um, and if you could, please check your cell phones, silence the cell phones. I don't want to hear them. <laughs> That's just a matter of fact. Nobody else wants to hear it either. <laughs> silence the cell phones. Uh, and please, um, no food or drink in here um, before, during, or after. I think everyone's good on that level. And if uh, anybody in the way, way back wants to scoot up to the way, way front, they absolutely can. But if they want to sit in the back and hang out with the lollygaggers and the bad kids, <laughs> then so be it. Uh, anyways, that's all for me. Thanks for coming, guys. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Welcome to church. Good morning. I am Destiny Peterson. Thank you so much for being with us. I, uh, you can get involved by going to our YouTube chat line uh, on the, uh, right, YouTube chat line, and James Herrick will get your questions and answers, uh, your questions to me, all right? I do appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, y'all. Welcome. I saw I missed church yes, last Sunday. It's weird that two... Another week has gone by just that fast. So, but we're back now. And that's what matters. So y'all been well? Yeah. Yeah. I explained it on the radio on Friday when I did my show about being sick. I was out sick. So what happened was, and I don't know if I remember all details now. So I guess two weeks ago now, right? I was in there doing my radio show. And then all of a sudden, I just felt a heat wave in my chest. I got really hot, broke out in sweat like a slave. Like I was down in the cotton field and it was 12 noon. <laughs> Cause that's when it was really hot <laughs> down in Alabama. And so and all of a sudden, I just got this great image in my head. And uh, next thing I knew, I passed out. My head hit the desk. And I just literally blanked out. And I'm like, what the? But I didn't know I had blanked out. That was so weird. It's weird you could blank out and not know you blanked out. And so when I came out, James said I was in there about four seconds, right, James? Four seconds? Like 10 or 30 seconds. That. You're making it longer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said, I've been happy here that was just four. At least I didn't leave my body, you know? But now James said 10 or 20 seconds, however long. But I did pass out. I literally passed out. And then when I came back, I had asked Nick to bring me some water because I thought it was too hot in the studio. But I do kind of remember him bringing it, and that's it. Um, and so I woke up, and everybody running around, and I'm like, have Nick finish the show or something like that. And they called the emergency car thing the fire department. So the fire department have a long truck to put out fires, but they also have a short truck for medical issues. So they came and 
I laid on the couch in the lobby, they examined me, they examined my heart, my blood pressure, and everything. What? I was on hold for like 10 minutes, and nobody talked to me. They wouldn't talk to you in the emergency? Yeah, for 10 like minutes. a robot was talking to me, telling me, please don't hang up if you're, if you're having an emergency, please hold. And I was like, Whoa. wow. Here I am dying, and they want you to hold on? <laughs> what the? And so they came, and they examined me, but they couldn't find anything. They did say, hey, your blood pressure went up. So I don't know if that had anything to do with anything. But uh, they examined me, and they couldn't find anything. And after that point, they left. And I went and just rested in my office. And they suggested that I see a doctor. And so I went to see the doctor the following, you know, next few days or so. And the doctors gave me every kind of test that they could possibly give. Blood test, heart test. I saw two specialists, heart doctor specialist thing. Uh, they gave me the temperature thing over and over again, blood pressure, just x-rays and all you can think of. And uh, it was like I was on an assembly line because all these different nurses and doctors came through and just taking all kind of tests. And you got to know, I hate, hate needles. I do. I, every time I think about idea of a needle, I'm like, so when they say, oh, we got to do a blood pressure, a blood test, Mr. Peterson, I'm like, all right, come on. And he's like, relax. All right. <laughs> but I am, and then I got those little veins now where you can't hardly find. <laughs> so they have to end up punching you two or three times. I'm like, what the? And so, uh, so at the end, they just said, you know, we really can't find out what's wrong. We see nothing wrong with you. Blood pressure was normal, everything was normal. And the doctor finally suggests that I go home and just relax and drink a lot of water and fluid and stuff like that. And that's exactly what I did. I stayed home in bed and just totally relaxed. Uh, one of the doctors asked me was I work a lot. And when I explained uh, what happened for the last almost 30 years now, I've been getting up every morning I don't know how long we've been doing the podcast, but I've been getting up at 3 a.m. every morning to do my prayer, to get ready to meet Nick at the studio about 5 so we can go over the show packet. And so I've been doing that for years now. And then we do counseling, and then I've been working out at the gym like a slave. I lost all my muscles. <laughs> Isn't it amazing you work so hard for the muscles? You get sick to it, and the muscles are gone. <laughs> I'm like, what? The, I don't mind losing the big bulky muscles because I never really want to be bulky. I just want to be toned. I don't want to belly and all that. Right? I just, who had time to keep up with all that, right? And so I just want to be toned. I did lose my stomach finally because as I was working out, I could not lose my stomach no matter how hard I work. I would get sick. The stomach gone. I'm like, right on. And so. So I just been resting all that time. I was, I was sleeping through the morning. I would wake up before six to do my prayer though, because God said I pray early, and so I would wake up and do my prayer. And I realized, oh, the show is on. Let me listen to Nick on the show. And then I went to listen. I'm like, nah, and I go back to sleep. <laughs> so, and I did listen one time, Nick, for thirty minutes. At the end. <laughs> But it was a mess. I felt like a beta. <laughs> really, I kept calling myself a beta. And, and the reason I was a beta because I realized while I was sick that there's nothing I can do about this. Nothing. You, it made me realize, I already realized there's nothing that I can do about anything. I can't change myself. I can't change what's happening in the world. I just have to let it go through me and live, and just continue to live. And I realized, with being sick, that I, I wanted my mama. <laughs> I was like, I can't find my mama. <laughs> and I wanted my grandma. And the reason I wanted my grandmothers, because I remember as a kid when I would get sick, my grandmother really babied me. She would take care of me, make the best meals, and you want some soup? Yeah. 
And so I wanted my grandmama and everybody. And I was like totally beta. There was a guy that came into the doctor's office and he went out in the lobby and he was like in real, real pain. And so like, I was on the inside of the, I was in the lobby, I didn't see him. But he was yelling, beta, beta. And the doctor was like, beta, what do you mean? So he was the one having all the pain. But he would yell at beta. You do feel like if you've ever been sick, you'll see you're a beta. Because <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to see it through, really. And so I just relaxed and realized I got to just see the thing through. And so I just slept, I ate oranges and things like that. Uh, I had not eaten an orange in a long time. So I was talking to the Mexican cowboy boy, Samuel. And I said, me, oh, he suggests, oh, you should eat some oranges. I was like, oh, okay. And so I was taking any advice. So I ate a couple of oranges. It was so good, really good. And so, but I realized it was a beta because I couldn't do anything about it. I also realized that in reality, we really, 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 really see reality. We're not in control of anything. Our egos want us to think that we are, but we're really not in control of anything. There's not one thing in your life that you're in control of. But the ego wants you to think that you are, and I realize that. And I'm glad to see that. I'd rather to know that I'm not in control than to think that I am in control and I'm not, right? So I'm okay with that. Uh, so I'm back, and uh, it's good to be back. And I have to thank my staff because they ran everything as though I was there, really. That's one thing I did not have to be concerned about is what was happening in the, in the building, in the office. Because the front office, the radio guys, the PR guy, the father state lady, and everybody just did their thing, the engineer. They ran it. I'm like, wow, this is really, really deep. Not to have to be worried about it because most people, if they uh, own a business and they have to take off, everybody else just mess up, you know. The boss is away, so let's play. But they did. They just kept the same professional, serious work ethics, and I am grateful to myself. They ran the show on time as well as I know, and they did exactly what they would do if I was there. And... Uh, and so I was thinking while I was sick too, I'm like, maybe the people would see now that Jesse was born of a woman and not of God. And that we he is no different than any of us. All who are born of the woman must be born of the father, right? And then once born of the father, you have to overcome the ego. And that's all I'm doing here, folks. I am just Jesse. And then in your mind, some people see me as different. They don't see me with them. They see me above them, and I can't do anything about that. And then when you get sick, then I come down to their level. And they're like, oh, the guru is sick. <laughs> He's not as wonderful as I thought. But they make me, they, they act like I made them think that way. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not paying attention to thoughts. It's the thoughts that make you think that way because all thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. And so hopefully you've dropped me down to your level and so that you can see that the kingdom of heaven is inside of you too and that all who are born of the woman is no different than anyone else. And I'm just being used to bring you a message to uh, return to the Father. I hope that that happened. I can't make you bring me down, but all people, don't put anyone above you, all right? Uh, what else I wanted to say about that? Any questions about that? What? You raise your head like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry if I uh, I scared you. I just want to know. Every time I see the Hitler sign, it scares me. <laughs> I just want to let you know that I uh, that I know exactly how uh, how you feel. You have uh, you have uh, you get uh, get tired. Uh, Tired, you felt uh, felt dizzy, even faint, uh, even faint. The same thing happened to me a couple of years ago, yeah. and they went to uh, went to a doctor and, and examined me, and they said even though uh, outside my my heart was uh, was had a small condition, I was perfectly healthy. Yeah. 
One thing about passing out, I was telling a friend of mine that I had passed out, and he said a number of years he passed out, and uh, and C would tell him, oh, you're going to be passing out forever now. You can't drive your car, you can't do anything, because you're going to pass out. <laughs> That's the same thing C was telling me. Oh, you can't drive, you can't do anything now, because you're going to pass out. The one thing I did, thank God, is that... Uh, over the last 31 years, I have become more and more aware of thoughts. And so if it seemed good or if it seemed bad, I know now to just observe the thoughts, relax and observe the thoughts, because the thoughts will make you think things are worse or better than what they are, right? And if you think, especially when you're sick or whatever, maybe, if you believe them, you end up destroying yourself because they get involved in everything. But thank God I did not overreact and I still paid attention to thoughts. And believe me, they were working overtime. Really. And they were like, what's going to happen if you die? I'm like, what? I just let, <laughs> I just let James run it. <laughs> and then it, they were telling me, oh, you need to have a will made up. And I'm like, who am I going to get my stuff to? So I'm trying to think of all these names of people that I like. But, uh, but I don't like anyone well enough to give my stuff to. But no, I'm playing. But I'm telling you. So what? Yes. So um, you're talking about thoughts. Yes. Um, I've been trying to fast um, because I you, want to try to get closer to you've God. You've been fasting with food? Fast with food. Oh, okay. And um, I said, okay, I'll just do a simple fast where I just eat one meal um, like after sunset, you know, start there because I've never fasted before. But my thoughts are getting me so obsessed with food yeah. that I am like overeating now because <laughs> I'm so obsessed with it. So I'm just, my question is, is I want to fast. How do I get out of my thoughts so I can fast and not be so obsessed with food, because I'm like question. obsessed with it. Yeah. Uh, okay. When I was sick, I, I, one thing I want to say about being sick, I didn't have any pain. I didn't have any anything. I had no pain when I was sick. It just that incident happened, and I just I just really needed some rest too. But the only way that you're going to defeat these thoughts is that you must, and I'm going to talk about faith and prayer a little later. You must learn to live from within, do the silent prayer, so that you will grow away from those thoughts. And, and so when, when you do decide, you know what, I'm going to do a little fast. And say going to tell you, oh, how about a steak meal today? A, a little dessert. <laughs> You'll be able to resist the thoughts. Really, that's the only way you're going to do it. Because we are born in sin, and we lived in our head for so long, we're really influenced by those thoughts more than you think, right? And so, but you got to do the silent prayer. You got to live from within, you, not from without. You got to live from within if you want to defeat those thoughts. And it's not you defeating them because it's a battle going on between your enemy, which are thoughts, and, and God. There's a spiritual battle going on. There's a battle outside too. But if you do the silent prayer, forgive, do the silent prayer, you eventually you'll get more and more and more away from them, and you're not so easily uh, seduced by it. That's always going to happen. You got to see that all thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. It really, and there's thoughts are wicked. That's why God said, bring everyone into captivity. So when you, let's say you want to do a fast, don't even say it out loud. Oh, I'm going to do it fast, right? Just start gradually doing all things in moderation anyway, right? Just start doing it without thinking about it. Don't give room to thoughts, which is of the devil. J just do it I without thinking about it. Food, you do what now? I let myself run out of food where my refrigerator and my shelves got completely empty. Yeah. So I can start it. <laughs> <laughs> what I ended up doing is just going to restaurants. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it didn't work. And don't judge yourself when you do it, though. Oh, okay, yeah. When you do, like, if you overeat, like, well, I overeat, I thought I was fasting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Don't make I it a beat deal. I feel bad. There's nothing, one thing in life, there's nothing in life that is a beat deal. Mm-hmm. It's just right or wrong, good or evil, not a beat deal. Just don't judge yourself by it. Take it one day at a time and you'll be fine. Thank you. Are you doing the silent prayer? Um, you know what? I've watched it on YouTube, but I haven't done it. Is this your first time here? This is my second time. Oh, okay. And why haven't you done it? Because uh, I can't sit still. Yeah. Yeah. And why can't you sit still? Uh, I just get, like, nervous and, like, um, like um, I get nervous and I get, like, oh, I have so much to do today. I just can't sit here and do this. So I start <laughs> panicking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you believe that you or a spirit that made a home in you? Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's not you. Yeah. That thing that made a home in you when you became angry, judgmental, no love, that's the ego, which is the nature of Satan. And the last thing that the ego wants you to do is to be still. Mm-hmm. It wants you acting because that's how it's still alive. It wants you overreacting, you know. It wants you busy. But if you can ever learn to be still, uh, it will. It's a. I got a little thing about that too. It's a. The ego death is amazing. It's a painful thing, but it will get less, become less and less and less. But you got to stay with that because that's not you that does not want to sit still. That's that spirit that of darkness that cannot handle the light. Can it cause physical pain? Like sometimes, like even right now as you're talking, I'm starting to get a headache right here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you I'm like, can it, as you're, as you're sitting, trying to sit still, can you like feel like your body's like not liking it like right now, like right yeah, here? Yeah, if you stress over it, yeah. because it will try everything it can to distract you from being still. Mm -hmm. Really, it would try everything. I'm telling you as a living witness, and I'm telling you this because I have gone through it for the last 31 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I know that ego death, and no wonder people don't want to pray, I don't blame (laughs) y'all. The the straight and narrow road is a mess because that ego pain is the one that most people don't want to face because it feels like it's you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, because it's alive and it feels like it's you, but it's not. Mm-hmm. It's a spirit in your body and in the mind, working through your mind, but it's not you. Mm-hmm. And, and once you're born of the Father, now you have the help to fight the darkness. Before you couldn't do anything about it at all, and you still can't, but at least you got the help of the Father. You have the Holy Spirit, you have Christ and God inside of you, and, and he will fight that battle for you. But you got to let go and let it happen. And he fights it when you're quiet? He, he really fights it when you're quiet. Okay. Because of ourselves, we can do nothing, and of ourselves, we know nothing. And every human being that in this side of the heaven, born through the woman, have to go through this. A mm-hmm. few make it, most don't. Because it's the ego thing that they don't want to handle. Mm. They can't let it die. They won't let it die. It's too painful. Yeah, it's very painful. And, uh, but you've got to do the silent prayer because, oh, it's easier to do the hoop and holler prayer. Really. Mm-hmm. Let's say you're going through something and say, what do you do the hoop and holler prayer? Ask the Lord to help you. <laughs> I put on oh, gospel me, music. So what? I put when I'm going through stuff. Yeah. I put on gospel music really loud, and I start praising the Lord and yeah, dancing around. Yeah. That's but I right. can't sit still. That's right. That's the one thing that we all have to do to overcome. We must. I can't stress enough how important it is to do the silent prayer and let yourself go through it. You just. Uh, if it hurt, it just hurt. Oh, I'm just starting to sweat right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I feel hot. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I'm making it as serious as I'm saying it because I had to go through that stuff, you know, and and sometimes you just want to pull it out of you, or like what the, you know. But you got if you seriously, seriously. 
want to become a son or a daughter of God, you must die from the ego. And you can't make it happen. You just have to let it happen. And it happens by sitting still. Because when you sit still, what I notice is that, and, and I'm telling you all this as I'm learning it. I'm like living life and learning and sharing it. That's all going on, right? Um, what God is trying to do is to realign your soul with him. He wants your soul, which is him, his spirit, to become one, really. And so when you sit still, he is causing that to happen. He is realigning you because when you were turned away from your father, you were turned away from him, from God, right? And so you weren't in the same one accord with the father. You, weren't, you were like that as a kid, but as an adult or when you were traumatized, you were turned away from the father. So now he's trying to turn you back and become one with you. And that's why he has to destroy that ego because that's the nature of Satan. What about reading the Bible? Like I can sit and read the Bible. You can read until the cows come home? Uh, for like an hour. Uh, yeah, the cows are home by an hour. <laughs> um, I would read, but not to remember. Mm. You know, uh, have you gone and forgiven your parents and all that? Um, I think so. You don't know if you went and forgave your, your mother and your father? Well, I mean, they passed when I was young. Oh, so, I see. So I think I have, though. Okay. Um, make sure you, that's why it's so important to get to know yourself. It, it's weird that I know this, but it's all weird in a good way. But I'm just a little country boy, right? And it's amazing that the father guy, but the same thing is in everybody else. I'm no different. It's, it, we all, if we return to the Father, we all have that same spirit in us to guide us. If you don't, we have that same spirit of Satan. It's all the same. And so that's why you need to get to know yourself and keep an eye on yourself from within. I wish people understood how important it is to live from within now. Mm -hmm. The new kingdom, the paradise is inside of us, right? And it's so important to live there, but it's not easy. It is not easy. But you'll grow into it if you're willing to die. And at this point, whatever it takes, I'm willing to die. I, if I had to go through that for the ego to die, I know now that there's nothing I can do about it. I'm willing to take the pain of it. Mm -hmm. So far, I don't know what tomorrow I'm going to bring. But as of right now, I am because the more I endure, uh, oh, I want to tell you this, the more I endure, the stronger you become from within. And one thing I noticed about the ego death, it's about everything that's important to you. It's like, if you're gonna lose your job, right? They say, okay, you gotta take the vaccine or you're gonna lose your job next week. And so what happens is right away the ego get busy. Oh, you're gonna lose your job. Then you start worrying and then you start, you start thinking, right? And that's when that ego pain come because somebody has said they're going to take something away from you mm. and they're going to take your job. And, and that's what really brings that ego pain on because what needs to happen when, you, when they say, I'm going to take your job, you still have a job, right? So you need to live by faith. Don't jump ahead. Don't reason with it. Just take it one day at a time, one moment at a time to live by faith. And that's another thing I noticed that until you're born of the Father, it's hard to live by faith. But the ego shows you what's important to you. And when you die of that ego, you die of that thing that's important to you. And you become, you're in the world, but all of a sudden that's not that important anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you have the confidence to know that the Father would take care of you. You'll just be fine. Without even thinking about it, you'll be fine. So that was the whole purpose from the beginning of fasting was trying to uh, get that personal relationship with Jesus and to feel that he's with me because I don't feel that. So I yeah. felt like if I fasted, 
that I could go there, but I can't no, go there. You can't go there until you admit you're wrong for being angry, playing God, judging yourself and other people, and then go with there. He'll bring you with there because he'll forgive you, and then he'll bring you with there, and then you'll start living. Fasting ain't going to do it. Oh, I had heard that. that does. Yeah. You got to make sure you forgive your mother for she did the best she could do mm -hmm. by turning you away from your father. She couldn't help it, right? And your father for not uh, protecting you. Because unless you love your earthly father, you're not going to ever love God. Mm. But uh, so you fast, then it's better to go within and you will see what to do from that point forward. Okay. Yeah, it will come down. But it's best to fast away from the world and, li you know, to live from within and that work for you. Mm. But it ain't easy. I don't blame y'all for not doing it. Who <laughs> want to do that and go through that? You know what I'm saying? Because it feels like something in you dying. It feel like, I almost feel like a cancerous thing or something. What I imagine that that feel like. But it got to die. There's no way around it. This is why, once again, that only a few will find that straight and narrow path. It's easy to hoop and holler. It's easy to lift up holy hands. It's easy to say, oh, I can see now. And you, if you have forgiven, and God will forgive you, you will be able to see. But the hard part is dying. That's the hard. That's where the rebel meet the road. It's the dying part. It really is. I want to tell you this, and then I'll take some questions. I will, uh, TB was born, everything was born to me. I, I, uh, but I have to watch a, a, a segment of 60 Minutes last Sunday. I used to love to watch 60 Minutes, but not anymore. And it's just, you can't believe it. It's boring. And so I, I, sometimes I'll tune in just to see what they're going to talk about, the headlines. And there was just one girl in the beginning of the show. And I'm not going to remember every detail verbatim, so I'm not, I may not quote everything. I do want to tell you this first. So watching preachers on TV, and they were like lifting up holy hands and praising and singing and talking about one day we get to heaven. Oh, God, glory and all that. I'm like, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> but anyway, so Sister Minnie did this special. Well, not special, but this segment on this young girl. She went into the military at 18, I believe, 19. And she wore all type of, uh, not all type, but she wore the medals whatever they do in the military. And she was still in her 20s when they presented the story. And uh, so one day she decided that she found some information about Russia, stuff like that, right? And the voting and all that. And so she gathered all this information and she sent it to the media according to the story. And, uh, and when she sent it to the media, the... Uh, FBI and people like that found out she had done it. And once they found out she had done it, they called her a, uh, what, do, what do you call when you? Uh, Whistleblower. What? No, when, they inf when they give information, Traitor? a defect defector? Yeah. Whistleblower. Leaker. Leaker. Whatever. Something like that. All that. Yeah. And so they eventually put her in jail. They said she was a traitor or something like that to the country. It's like that uh, other guy that they want to bring back from Europe. What's his name? Hassan. Yeah, wh yeah, Hassan. What do they call Hassan? Hassan. But he like a. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so like they put her in prison for four years. For how long? Four. Four year in, pri in prison. In prison for four years. Four years. She's a young girl, right? And so, but what was so interesting about her story is that when she was in prison, she said it was rough, right? It was, it was so rough, according to her, that she ended up cutting up her whole body. She would cut her body up uh, in prison. It was so rough. And then she ended up on, you know, all kinds of stuff. But she cut up her body and things like that. And then she said that one day, she had been seeing this priest walk up and down the hallway or see him around. And one day the priest came by and she said to the priest, priest, Mr. Priest, why don't they care about us out there? Why don't they help us? And the priest 
said to her, nobody give a F about you. <laughs> Those people don't give a F about you. And she said that day she became a drug addict. She literally became a drug addict, right? And so the reporter, the, the woman that was interviewing her asked, well, how, how is that now? She said, it's a little better, but it's so bad I can't tell you. I don't even want to talk about it it's so bad, right? But the point that I realized from that, so here this girl, now she's in prison. She's been thought of as a traitor to her country. She's now worried about her life being over and all that stuff, right? People are going to see her as a traitor. Her life is now over. It's just going to be done, right? And you can imagine Satan working her mind like 90 going off all the time, right? And instead of her being still through that and letting that ego thing die, you know, from worried about what's going to happen, how this thing going to turn out, blah, 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 rather than having a faith, which is a wait and see attitude, she believed the lies in her head and it became very painful to her ego to the point that, and I thought that this was deep, to the point that she cut her whole body up. And so, and I thought, wow, the ego pain is worse than, in, than cutting up a body. It's like it was easier for her to cut up her body and then to endure the ego death. Isn't it like deep? That's how serious that pain is. To cut up her body was easier than being still and going through the ego death. And that's how a lot of people are. They commit suicide. They, they become sick from worry. They do all kinds of things rather than facing it because you got to have faith. And the hardest thing to do is to have faith. You can say, oh, I got faith, right? But as soon as a storm comes, your little face is out the window. <laughs> like, what faith? <laughs> <laughs> if everybody needed you, Lord, I need you now. <laughs> but things happen so that our ego, we can die from the ego. Not that you're forgiven. You have help now, because beforehand when you tried to solve the ego issues, you had no help because you were turned away from the Father. You had no the light of the Father to fight the darkness. You didn't have that in you to help you. But now that you have it, once you forgive, you don't have to freak out. Just let yourself go through it. You're overcoming the world. You're uh, in it, but not of it. All that stuff is being taken away from you. It really is. Uh, I read somewhere that, and it's so true, that prayer is of the heart, not of the head. It's of the heart. Everything is of the heart. I would change your heart. I would turn your heart from stone to love. I would do this and that, right? Because once you change the heart, you now have his nature, his love, and his love changes everything else. Now, the world may not see you that way because it's still judgmental, but you would know within yourself what's going on. You really will. And I'm telling you, you got to go through the ego pain. There's no way around it. You can pray and carry on. You can even do the silent prayer, but when something happens, if you don't be still through it, you'll throw the silent prayer out the window. This ain't working. But you got to endure the pain. You have the Father, you have the Holy Spirit. You have help now to die from that pain. But a lot of doctors would give you medicine for that. You go to the doctor, doctor, I'm just pressed. I'm worried, I'm this. Okay, here's a pill. But when the pill, the effects of the pill is gone, the, this pain is still there. It's still there. And the only way that it's going to die is that you got to die. You got to let it die. All right? It was amazing. That was amazing story to see this girl in doing physical pain over the spiritual pain. The spiritual pain is worse than the physical pain, apparently. I can't imagine doing it to my body, cutting it and all that, but uh, apparently that's what's going on. Because I, I know pe- I've counseled with other people who have cut up their bodies. I've counseled with people now for this last two or three years from around the world. There's nothing new under the sun. We all have to go that same road, either of the father or of Satan. None of us are in control of anything. So watch your thoughts. 
le learn to let them pass while you don't have heavy burdens to carry right now. And so when big things, what seem like big things, because nothing's really that big. And when they come, you notice the first thought and you're able to let it pass. You, you'll be aware. You got to start being aware. Uh, Paul said to pray without ceasing. Uh, and, and I remember Jesus said to pray and watch. You have to always be aware of the not you. Because it doesn't want to die. All right. That makes sense a little bit. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to share something with you about the silent prayer that happened to me. Well, not to me, but um, my sister is a psychologist, and she's like all about, you know, the worldly things, psychology, right. and all that. Yeah. And I was telling her, and she's always like has a drama, and she calls me and everything. And I was like, and I just always like listen to her. Like, I can't say anything too much to her, but this time I decided to tell her, hey, I think you should try this out because you're trying all the psychology things to heal yourself right like uh, writing down in a journal and all those things and nothing has worked so what don't try this you know like why don't try something different i guess you know just for to try you know right. it's not gonna hurt you so she was doing it um she was telling me that she liked it a little bit but she rather does her do her own psychological things yeah. because she was feeling good about it like she didn't feel when she was doing the silent prayer which i understand because i went through that she was feeling uncomfortable. She couldn't sometimes breathe. It was hurting her. Her 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 head was hurting, and she's like, "No, it's not helping me. It's not helping me." <laughs> but when I have a like a trauma or PTSD, I have to go write down my things, and I feel good. And I'm like, "Oh, I let it all out." So I realized with that, seeing that because I was like that too, is that she has people. Everybody, I feel like, has to overcome feeling good. Yeah. You know. Like That's a very we, good point. we want to feel good. That's why the media, everybody, everything they do is to make you feel to, good. To feel good. Yeah. It feel good to hoop and holler. Exactly. It feel good. Oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It feel good to read the Bible, but it doesn't solve the issue at all. It's not You're what you need, right. and that's what I was telling her. Like I was saying, okay, so. It doesn't make sense. You wanna, you're doing this to feel good. It's like your drug. Yeah. You're going back to your alcohol yeah. because you are in pain, and you're drinking your alcohol, thinking, "Oh, I feel good," instead of staying still and going through the pain. Absolutely. And I had to like I saw you it. You so gotta deep. go through it, folks. You gotta let go and let God. Really, I have to do it. And so I'm not like Jesus Christ didn't have to do it because He was born through the Father. We were born of the Mother, and so. We all got to do it. This is the way back. You got to be still. You got to be willing to endure that pain. Otherwise, that you, that's why most people are not going to make it. They like this idea of, so I do this other prayer. But they don't like the idea of suffering and dying. It's just a mess. And you can't reach for anything on the outside. You can't be calling up friends, oh, I'm suffering and dying here. This is painful. <laughs> You can't reach for alcohol or drugs. You can't reach for aspirin. You got to go through it because you don't want anything on the outside to save you from it. Really, because whatever saves you on the outside from it, you're not saved. It, it's just building that thing, making it longer and worse. But what saves you from within, you're free and you're free indeed. You must be saved from that from within. If I wasn't experiencing this, I don't know if I would notice. <laughs> It's a mess. And when God changed my heart from hate to love, he took away my desire to try to change myself because I'm like everybody else. I was trying to change myself, my vices and all kind of stuff, right? But I couldn't. I literally couldn't. I know what Paul meant now when he said, I tried to change, but I couldn't. It's all spiritual all the time. But once you grow and overcome, he would change you. He will make you turn your vices into uh, virtues and all kind of stuff will happen. We are a spirit created in the image of God. And so God wants that little him that's in us to come back to him and be one with him. But he's not going to do it as long as you have an ego. Everything is about me, 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 right? As long as it's about me here and, and, and about that emotion. God wants you to overcome emotions. He wants you to be non-emotional, dispassionate. 
But the world and Satan's children of the world want you to be emotional. They push emotions. They push feelings and all that. And he's totally different than that. He's not about the feelings. All right? Only the ego is about the feelings. So when you do read the Bible, read it, but don't remember. You have a teacher, and he will bring all things to your memories. All right? Did I see your hand? Oh, okay. I saw here first and then there. Yes, sir. Over the last uh, end of this year, I had tried to really employ the silent prayer, and I felt myself overcoming fear, overcoming all these sorts of things after a while. And honestly, things seemed to get a lot worse. Yeah. Worse. The pain got worse. Yeah. The physical pain got worse. The luck of my life got worse. The clients I had were pulling out halfway. Yeah. <laughs> like it was really, really bad. And I met an awesome girl who I thought was like perfect. And we're, we're fine now, but things kept getting worse. And she was like, why is thing, are things going so bad, <laughs> badly for you? Yeah. And I just kept telling her, you know, just keep the faith. We're gonna do this. We're gonna get everything in order. We have to have faith in order to start our family and do yeah. all X, Y, and Z. And things kept getting worse. And even up until recently, I was like, you know what? I left the job because of a project and then the client pulled out and then I went back to my job. And then right when I went back to my job, I got sick because I hadn't been around people yeah. <laughs> so often. I caught a bug or whatever. And I was like, I can't even go to this job <laughs> that I'm trying to do because I, I'm too sick. And I just felt so powerless. And even recently, like yeah, at, deep, that's true, man. at the end of this year, I had really kind of started stepping away from smoking weed and my roommate was a real stoner and he's uh, <laughs> been offering it to me and all that but when i got sick you really can't smoke weed because the boogers you have get way worse yeah. you know so it's not it's not bearable <laughs> no, no no i'm serious no so, and then when <laughs> i i gave up and i just said you know what i'm just gonna go right to prayer and i even bought uh cough drops and my girlfriend was like, you don't want cough drops because <laughs> you're just going to be dependent on the cough drops. Yeah. And I was just like, that's so funny because this is supposed to be a very minimal thing. That's supposed to be just a little, little vice you know, of a cough drop. But in reality, I, I was like, you know what? I, I need to get over the cough drop. So I stopped and I prayed and prayed. And I, I couldn't even sit in front of my computer to get the work I needed to do done. Yeah. I, was, I had too much of a headache. And I just turned off all the music. I turned off all the YouTube videos. I turned off everything. I, I haven't even been to church probably in months just because I've been working on the weekends so much. Yeah. And then it wasn't until I really just cut everything out, including soda, <laughs> including uh, junk food. I had to cut out everything and really just be at peace. Yeah. Not only did I get a lot of clients back, <laughs> But I got better like the next day. Absolutely, <laughs> it was really crazy. But I, I, I really feel that you're going to get worse when you do the silent prayer, especially if you haven't done it. And what? And the reason it seems like things are getting worse is because you're dying, right? Mm -hmm. And we're so attached to everything, everybody, everything, and it just feels like it's getting worse. But in reality, it's getting better. It's being made right. And you're not losing life, you're losing death, you're overcoming death. So it feels like you're losing everything and getting worse. So I remember that was one point I was so out of it. So I'm laying there doing a silent prayer, and, and, and Satan said, look, you're doing a silent prayer, God ain't helping you. You're getting worse, you're gonna die. I'm like, what the? <laughs> I'm telling you, you have to watch those thoughts in all things. Because Satan look for opportunity to deceive you. No matter what it might be. You gotta learn to let those thoughts pass. And you gotta be of love. And you will, once your heart is turned from stone to love, you will become of love. Then you will start to grow. I'm telling you, you will have the power to die from the ego. It will happen. Yes, sir. Jesse, you say there's, um, and I believe there's, no such thing as a true thought. Is there a true emotion? No. Right. They're all lies. Well, too. what happens is once you die, you know, as you die from the ego, you go to, there's a time for everything. Like, let's say mama died. 
and so you go to the funeral and all that. And you got to have your little mourning period, you know, mom and dad, and you got to cry some tears for a minute maybe, but let that pass. It should be going on for days and years and, right. and all that. Mom and dad, thank God for mama, shed a few tears and go your way. So there's a time for everything, but in the world where you're of the world, it's all emotion and, and just messed up. No, I agree. Here I, I, and all that. I, uh, but there is a time for everything. It's interesting. I, I don't have to, if you want to go too deep into it, but I don't even think necessarily crying is an emotion. If you're mourning, that, why is, I don't even see that necessarily mourning is an emotion. It's just kind of, you grieve and then, like you say, you just move on. I remember when my father expired, and because we had worked out everything, and I was really, really close to him, when he finally expired, it was like he never died. I noticed his eyes closed, we put him in the ground, but he never died, so I never shared a tear. tear. I didn't try to make myself not share one. And even to this day, it doesn't really feel like, I know he, his physical being is gone, but it's almost, it's like he's still with me. Like, we still have an amazing relationship. And my father was so cheap. <laughs> I would never forget that. I remember when I was a teenager, I would ask him for money because he always had different businesses and all that. And I would say, hey, can I have some money? He's like, oh, yeah, OK. And he'll pull out this money, and it'll be like in a row. And you can see a whole bunch of dollar bills and things. And he would give me like a five. <laughs> or, or a 10. I'm like, this ain't no money. Why are you so cheap? <laughs> but I noticed that my brothers and sisters on his side of the family, we we're all the same. We kind of cheap too. <laughs> I still pick up pennies on the street. You nice. Ever do that? Nice. Uh, yeah. I'm like, I'm not too proud. I see other people walking past the penny. I'm like, I'm not too proud to pick up that penny. This is uh, almost a dollar. <laughs> But yeah, when you are dispassionate, there's a time for everything, and you deal with it accordingly. It was interesting because uh, after a period of silent prayer, I um, it was very early in the morning, and I still had some time before I got up, and so I just did some reflecting. And I started because what came to my memory was I talk about how love is not an emotion, yeah. right? So love. I, one thing I know for sure and without a doubt. Love is not an emotion. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I agree with it's you. It's not it's, that stuff you feel a, is not a, love. It's That's when it turns being. on you just like that. It's not love. It's an expression of being. Uh, God is love. Uh, right. Um, but then I started going, you know, kind of going, well, what about joy? And you're just like, what? So if you overcome emotions, you don't laugh or, you know. And it was, but then I, it, then I just kind of realized me that all the fruits of the spirit, the nine fruits of the spirit that Paul talks about in the, the New Testament, none of those are emotions. Yep, they're not. Peace is not an emotion. Joy yeah, is not an emotion. Faithfulness is not an emotion. All of them. And it's like, wow, this is really you can be, and you don't have to be em emotional. You just be. Just be. Yeah, it's amazing. But it has to happen from within, not without. It got to come from within. All right. Any other questions? Yes, Raymond. About what you say that we have to learn, uh, we have to learn, uh, learn the truth from within. Yes. It seems like uh, it seems like it's almost the same way when dealing with COVID nineteen. I always believe, I always believe uh, that um, the uh, immune uh, that the true immunity comes from within. And yet, for every person you have learned, I found out that for every person um, who realized that there may be a hundred or even a thousand people that refuse to uh, refuse it. It's like if, if you, uh, if you see a cure for cancer. Amazing. <laughs> nice. I don't understand it, but it's nice. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Uh, I think I understand what you're trying to say. Um, I really, really, really want to encourage you to do the silent prayer. Really. I have to do it. I've been doing it now for, and I'm glad that I have to do it. I can't not not do it, you know. And that's how you communicate with the Father, and you must have faith. And a little faith, did you know that without faith, you can't even please God? 
God don't lie to you if you don't have faith. You're like, what the? Without faith, you cannot please God. You got to have faith. And you can't taste faith. You can't touch it. It's a, a way of living. It's just like living doubt. When you, in, when you have an ego, you live a life of doubt. And so when you flip that over, you just naturally live a life of faith. And again, don't try to reason with it. Don't jump ahead of it. Just let it be, and you follow faith. You can't lead it. You have to follow it. And faith and prayer, you got to get with that if you want to get through this. I would think of how I notice people are shy and insecure, and when they're around other people, they're uncomfortable, and all that. I'm like, wow, that's such a horrible way to live. As adults and as human beings, we should not be around one another and feel uncomfortable or feel shy or worry about what they're thinking about you. Uh, am I dressed right? And comparing ourselves to one another, right? But in that fallen state, you do that. But on the other side of that fallen state, you don't do that. Because we, you see that we're all the same. We all have to over, we're born in sin. We must overcome it. And the only way to overcome it is see that we're wrong. We've got to love one another. We're all the same. Nobody have a special problem. You do not have a unique problem. There's nothing new under the sun. And there's no unique way out except you admit you're wrong so that God can forgive you and you'll be fine. But you got to endure the ego. That makes sense? Any questions? Oh, right. Did this help a little bit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How's things going for you? Anyway, it go well? Yeah. Meaning, is it your first time here? No. Oh, okay. Meaning what? When you say well? Uh, just enduring the pain. Yeah. Having you, faith. You're doing the silent prayer and stuff? Uh, I do my best, but then, you know, the devil creeps up in my mind. You don't so need to now? do it today. The devil creeps up in my mind. Yeah. You don't got to do it today. You're okay. Things like that. And sometimes I uh, stray away, but then I come back to it. Yeah. The last thing that Satan wants you to do is to be still. Really. That's a, he does not want that. Don't do it. Don't do it. You got to go. You don't have time now. Do it once you get to work. Do it at lunchtime. When God said, seek me early, put it first. Seek first the kingdom of God in his right way, and all will be added. And you will find yourself overcoming the world. But you got to do the prayer. And when Satan tells you, oh, you don't have time, that's not you telling you that. He's telling you that. That's not you. He's just trying to keep you away from it. It, it just feels so real, you know? It's like you're telling yourself, and you're like... Yeah. Like it, makes it, think, it makes it feel like it's like God telling you sometimes or something <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah. It, because it's, that spirit is inside of you. It's in the mind, and it operates the mind and the feelings. And it does sound like it feels like you're telling yourself that. But when you really, 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 really think about it, you would never tell yourself, oh, I'm not going to pray. I won't be still today. I'll do it later. You would never tell yourself that. But he imitates you. He pretends to be you. He's pretending to be God. God is not of the mind. He's of the heart. Really, I'm telling you, as the witness, he is of the heart. And, and so and anyone who's trying to point you back to the Father, just know this is just another human being pointing me back to the Father. Don't let your mind go crazy with that either. You got to watch the mind. It's very tricky. Because you blame someone else for the way you think. They don't even have to make you think that way. You think that way, and then you blame them. Oh, they made me think this way. No, they didn't. Satan made you think that way. All thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. No such thing as a true thought. I wish that you could get that. And you got to endure. Cutting yourself up or getting high or running to the psychiatry and get some medication, ain't going to do it. You just have to come back to it because that just is like a, taking an aspirin, but the headache is still there under that aspirin. You just feel better about it. Well, stay with the prayer, man. You have a family? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, stay with the prayer. You got your family needs you to do that. All right. Any questions? Not, not right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Hold on one minute. What? Thank you. <laughs> she says she doesn't need the mic. She doesn't like I don't like the mic. mic. She's you, falling asleep. Wake up. You don't like you don't like the mic? Nah. You don't need to like it. You just I use it. it. <laughs> it's not a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Go ahead. So you say that the heart is that what, wait, what did you say? I, I know what I want to ask, but everything is in the mind though, so your heart doesn't think for itself. So what? how is it that? Speak into the mic for me. Mama, let her, let her speak for herself. Stop looking at mama. She's not my mom. You act like her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You look like everything you're about to say, you're looking at mama first. No, it's because she gets me. Okay. See? She gets me. But I want to get you too. Thank you. Okay, so the mind is what controls your heart. You well, mean like the blood heart? Well, yeah, when you say heart, what do you mean? Your soul, your spirit. It's in your belly. Woman. Mama, be quiet. Mama. <laughs> See? Thanks, you're, you're Mama. interrupting your daughter. <laughs> mama, Mama. Say you got you interrupting your daughter, Mama. Yeah. She's falling asleep in church. <laughs> she's not she's, falling asleep. Her eyes are just closed. She's, but anyway, I'm talking about your, your soul, your, your spirit, not right. the blood pumping heart. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? In, your, in the side of your belly, there's a real you. There's a soul that's been disconnected from the Father and it's suffering mm -hmm. because it's not getting light, it's not getting love, it doesn't have any love, right? So that's what I'm talking about. Okay. And the mind cannot, it does not want to do anything about that because it wants to control you because your mind is not your own. See, it operates through your thoughts. Your thoughts are not your own, you never created a thought, they are not your own. Okay. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Did you try the silent prayer yet? No. Oh, uh, suffer. Why not? Okay. <laughs> you know about it, right? I know about it. Oh, okay. It, it, you want me to be honest with you? Yeah. No, lie to me. Okay. <laughs> I can do that too. Tell me sweet little lies. Um, I like that song. Um, <laughs> it, you're so funny. That Thank you. You're welcome. James said all black people like that. <laughs> hey, he's right. You're right. <laughs> He said they're so amusing, huh? He said, he said all black people are so amusing. Isn't that so white, huh? <laughs> um, when you say, you, he's just, you make me laugh too much, so I can't really take it. Like, when you say, let your eyes fall back in your socket, it's so dumb, but like, you just make me laugh. I can't control myself. All right. Like, so I just, I don't know. Well, when you get through laughing, then you can do it. Well, yeah. You just suffer if, until you're ready for it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Ready for it. Right on. Uh, okay. Um, is this your, your first time too, right? What's your name? Um, Tamiko. Take the mic for me. Oh. oh. How did you find us, Tamiko? Tamiko. Um, I've been following you for, for oh, okay. several years now. Any questions or disagreements or anything? Um, yeah, I have... Tad bits of disagreements, okay. like, you know. What's that? But, but mostly it's like, I'm like, 75%, mm, I like, agree with you. I don't agree with anybody totally, right. but but most of the stuff I agree with you. Are you doing so, the prayer? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. At first when I started it, I was like, I'm not doing that because that is like, you kept saying it was your silent prayer. I'm like, I'm not doing that. So <laughs> then I started to do it and I'm like, wow, this is, this really works. Yeah, yeah I do it. I do it all the time. And are you doing it every morning, every night? I do it. I do it every morning. Yeah. Um, I haven't been doing it every night, but yeah, I do it every morning. Well, I recommend that you do it every night before bed. Okay. You know, let's say you go to bed at nine. You don't have to wait until nine o'clock to do it. All right. You can do it at eight thirty, and right. go to bed thirty minutes later because you want rest at night as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I actually, say to get busy with the mind while yeah, you're sleeping. You're right. I I sleep really well. Like I can sleep in a trench, but I um, yeah. That would that would for sure. It wouldn't hurt it. It it wouldn't hurt. So yeah, yeah, I could do That's that. Right. I could do that. Right on. So, I'm glad you're here. Any question? Um, like I said, not really. Okay. It's just like I got these little pet peeves, like <laughs> because I um, I agree with you 100. Like okay, yeah, um, God 
God is a spirit, and the, yeah. the only way we can worship God is with spirit and truth. Yes. So, so I don't really see myself as a spirit, but I connect with God's spirit, and that leads me. But, um, yeah, I don't. Well, well you, your body is not a spirit, but yes. he created us in his image, right? And so that means right. he created us in the same spirit that he is. But we're not like gods, but we are chip off the old block. Right. We are him inside. And that's why he's trying to bring us back so that we can become right. one with him again. Right, right. See, and, I get all that. grow yeah. in him. <laughs> right, right. And also, I, this is a pet peeve, but I'm like, I technically don't like to refer to God as he because God is not a he. God is Who? God Almighty. You don't refer to God as a he? Right, right, because... Because I'm a teacher and I, like, as far as, like, English and languages, I'm like, I know that, like, inside, outside, upside down, that it's like um, God is single, the only entity that is, like, I mean, it's just, I don't think it's like, I don't reference God as a he. I, I always say either God or, you know, um, some other reference to God I never say he because I'm like he is a man and yes men are created in God's image but it's not the reverse um and when you say that it seems like the reverse and then also too like there are angels I believe and so he, the, there are angels and, and so we don't we have angels we encamped around us to protect us too I I agree with that yeah. but I'm like we don't go around saying he that angels are he angels, and you know why because they're not he they're spirits. there are no he ain't I mean there are he angels but no she angels Right, I agree 100. There's seraphs, cherubs, and angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I realize all that, too, as well. Yeah, there, there are no he angels. None. That's why Jesus so took the form of man. So you think God is a female? No, no. Jesus took the form of man. There, I, God is a spirit, right. and we must worship with spirit and truth. Like, it's so like me, I like to um, say, like the wind, like the wind, the air, wind, air, it's all the same thing. It's every single solitary it's everywhere. It's inside of us, outside of us. It permeates, it touches us, you know. Yeah. But we're not the air. And it's, when I think of it like that, or and like we're not spirit. God either. Right, exactly. That's exactly. why you we're have not. to overcome the That's, heart so that you see you're not God. Right. That's why it's a pet peeve, but I just don't like to refer to God as oh, a he. What type That's of teacher are you? Um, you're a school teacher? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I just, I teach, I teach like, um, yeah, K through 12. But um, I, I, I feel like it's appropriate for women to be able to teach young children, like, well, until boys mainly until they get 13, because, like, the things that I teach, like math, reading, writing, arithmetic, um, it's all factual. And, right. like, it's nothing that I'm thinking of that I'm teaching them from right. myself. Like, right like, like, math is a universal language, and it is facts. And it, is, it has been around for, you know, like, God created math, I think. <laughs> but He created all things. Right. So... When I'm teaching these children, I like I don't. It's not coming from me, like as a as a woman. It's coming. I mean, it's just I'm just teaching them like right. the factual things that Absolutely. I have. Absolutely. As far as you. like languages and stuff as well, um, you know, like English. I know like five different languages. <laughs> you know but five different languages. Five languages. Yeah. So I'm do fluent. Do you know uh, how about hola? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. What other languages do you speak? Do you know habla español? Sí. <laughs> how about how about hold on a minute, hold on. Oh, hi, how about glasses i'm like two things i know sorry <laughs> when i say glasses you know what i mean yes yes i do wow I do. you're I smart think i think that's really funny i think it's funny um, um you I, speak, I speak russian what, what's your five languages? chinese american sign languages uh, that was my first language um russian chinese um spanish in English. Whoa. <laughs> I have to say English. <laughs> so you speak Chinese too? Yes, yes. So if Mandarin. I walk into your cafe and I say, oh, it's not Chinese, it's right. technically Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fluent? No, I was just going to say, I'm oh. fluent in three of them. American Sign Language, English, and Spanish. But, you say you're uh, fluent in Creole? No. <laughs> oh, in three of them. <laughs> three of them. Oh, three okay. of the languages. That I, I got know. you. Nice. And, and the other two, I just know. But you have to, it, it's, Languages Do you know Swahili? I don't. Oh. I don't. I don't know any African languages because I don't um, blame you. they. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like really like they. It's like some two hundred something languages on the continent of Africa, and it's like 
you know, it's, I feel like it would be kind of pointless to like learn at least one, then you go to another region, you have to learn something else and you have to have an interpreter. And so I'm just like, okay, I'm yeah. good. But, um, well, right on. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank but, you. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, the one thing I want to say is that um, y'all got to stop worrying, all right? You can't make yourself stop because nobody has any right. I mean, just live your life. It's time to start living. And we need, oh, what I want to say, we really need Christianity back. Because when I was reflected, I was thinking, wow, Christianity is nothing like it used to be. It's nothing like it used to be. I remember Christianity used to be strong. I remember it used to be about love. I remember it used to be about uh, not judging your fellow man, treating everybody the same. Because even doing this, so-called civil rights movement, black people were not judging the whites. They knew that it was bad and good people. And they knew that we should love everybody, right? And that all white people were like that because they weren't judging one another. We were taught that way by the adults and they lived that way. I remember when I was sick, right now, Nick was telling me that people want to know, what's going on? What's going on with Jesse? Is he dead? Well, it's just right. Their mind was going crazy. They were just, they forgot I said, don't get in the head. You know, all thoughts are all lies all the time. What the first thing they did was ran into their imagination. And imagine all these things that all I'm doing, laying up at home resting, waiting on the Lord. But, and so they were in their head. Christianity used to not be that way. And they asked, how is Jesse doing? And, oh, he's doing fine. He's relaxing. He's healing, right? That's enough. And uh, when I came back Friday, some guy called in and, and asked me, how come I didn't update them on what's going on on the net or something? I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> I wasn't raised that way. You know, there's nothing anyone can do anyway. When you say I'm doing fine, he relaxed, at least you know I'm not dead, and I'm healing. That's all you need to know. But people are so nosy and... <laughs> <laughs> and they put everything on the net, and they, I wasn't raised that way, folks. It's just not in my nature. Ain't y'all been this nowhere? It just nosy people want to know everything. That's nosy. I remember when uh, there was something that happened. When Nick would say, Nick would tell me that when he would say, "Just is relaxing." They didn't even. No, we need more. <laughs> <laughs> just he's resting. He's fine. He's alive. Uh, they're like, what's, they're like, why can't Jesse call in? Why can't you make him call in? And then they went as far as to say, what, J uh, James and Nick are not being transparent. Why are they lying to us? Like, <laughs> I've updated you every hour of every show. <laughs> what do you want? They wanted James to take a picture. <laughs> and that was the last thing I thought about doing, calling in, telling about anything. If I be the back, I'd tell you, I've been sick. This is what happened. I'm here. But the mind got you going. Because everybody put all their little business on the street, in the net. What you put your stuff in the net for? You may become a president one day. That's the first thing you're going to do, is pull out the lies or whatever it is about that you put out there yourself. People are very judgmental because they have no love. They're not like it used to be. It ain't your business. I remember I went to the toilet one day and I thought that maybe I should test that out. <laughs> Why? You don't need all that information. I remember when there were no computers, there were only phones home at the house. And then, uh, you know, what you call it? Landlines. The little yeah. Write a right. And I remember when I was dating, I would never write a letter to my girlfriend. Uh, I ain't write no letter. Can you imagine writing a letter? Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I'm missing you. I remember when I moved to Alabama, I mean, I moved here from Alabama. I wrote my son's mother a letter one time, and I kept it very basic. <laughs> I'm in California, all is well, I hope you're doing fine. I wouldn't take pictures because you just don't know what your life is going to turn out to be. You don't know what God has in store for you, right? And you put your own business out there, you can't blame nobody. Because the world is evil. The Christians and everybody are evil. They have no love. If you don't have love, you have nothing. Go to the source, forgive, and drop it. 
and let God's will be done. Revenge is ends and all that kind of stuff. You got to come back to the basic. Christianity is nothing like it. It has changed so drastically, I don't even recognize Christianity anymore. It's been so watered down. Isn't that a mess? So we will bring back Christianity this year. I want to get to the biblical question, but first I want, I saw a uh, hand over here. So after my shock finding out that you, you were out, I, I just thought my computer wasn't working because every time I'd look for you, you're <laughs> offline. And it, uh, it re reminded me, uh, okay, then you, they said you were out, you were sick. So it reminded me of the old days when I would depend on somebody and they'd, they'd be part of your life, some place you would go, and how much you were attached to that person because yep. I used to be really Absolutely. attached to these people. You know, it's like I grew up with Michael Jackson, and it's like you were either Prince or Michael Jackson. Which one are you, right? right. One of the two. And you're so attached to that person, you can't even, they're like, they're like God. You don't yep. know you like them like God, but you do. This is a perfect another of, way to examine yourself. When so, I'm not around, you're supposed to still be living. I'm not your life source. You know what I'm saying? God is your life source. I'm yeah. just bringing you the message. And he made me do that. I didn't wake up one day and say, oh, let me go get the message of turning people around and all that, right? I just want to be a witness to it. I'm just a witness to it. But I'm not, don't attach to me. It's, it's just Jesse. I have to pray, I have to let the ego die, I have to watch myself, I have to do everything y'all have to do, except I'm committed to the prayer, most people are not. Because I really, 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 really want to be a son of God. The Bible says it's possible, that's what I want. I, I remember one day thinking a number of years ago, maybe I shouldn't have asked for that. I didn't know it was going to be that difficult. <laughs> you had to die and all that through the ego, right? But I truly want to know what it is to live on this earth as a son of the Father. Really. And I'm submitted to the prayer. I just let myself go through what I got to go through and see what I'm attached to. And once I can see that, I can overcome that attachment. But really, I'm, doing, I'm just doing the prayer. Most people are not. I'm watching myself. And if you do it, you'll get there too. You'll be fine. Yes. It's a hard thing to do. Uh, even myself. When I heard how Michael Jackson passed and I heard the autopsy report, I, I couldn't believe it. It said, he's a regular man. He had male pattern baldness. He had this, this. And my mind was telling me, no, that's Michael Jackson. He, you know, he did this and he was this, he was this. He's 50 something years old. My mind still couldn't allow reality to come in. So Amazing. it reminded me when you went out, it's like, okay, I'm. Whatever I'm attached, I need to be more with the creator instead of being a I'm physical person. You. That's right. And I mean, your God got sick. <laughs> what am I going to do? My God is sick. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's the opportunity to see where you are, how you have made me that way. I didn't make you that way. I didn't even know you were becoming that way. I'm trying to warn you not to never put another human being above you. Watch your mind so that you will see that. Even Christ, and I'm not comparing myself to him at all, he even warned the people, no, 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 don't be acting that way about me. It's not me, it's the Father that's in me. My Father sent me. Oh, no, but we're going to wish you anyway. No, don't do it. You're not, if you believe, wish me, you're not going to be able to believe in the Father. I just have a message for you. I'll bring you a letter from the Father. He's telling you to forgive. He sent me so I can make the way back for you. Those who believe in me will believe in him, right? Being that those that believe in Christ will believe in the, in the Father. You believe in the Son, you believe in the Father. That's why when you stop hating your earthly father, you can't help but believe uh, in your spiritual father. You can't have one iota of anger. Anger is evil. That's for sure. Anger is evil. And it'll mess with your mind in ways that you cannot even imagine. And you would think that those ways are your own. Because if you have love, you would see, well, I would never do what that person's doing. I would not. But when you're in your head, you will. Really. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I was thankful that I saw, you know, the, the show that day. And what happened, 
because you know it was like two or three weeks ago you asked how do we see you yes so you know what i mean like so it showed me that that i said it was like you know like an older brother that i wished you well but you know i was glad to see that that's basically that's what i'm saying right on you know so did you see me in the same you see yourself before that happened yeah in the same we see yeah. anybody else right right, right on yeah yeah, yeah. well don't be glad i'm sick did I say no? No, I no, no. no I knew. <laughs> oh, like, I you were glad to see that because it made sure I want your God. Right, and you're yeah. The wrong yeah position. Just exactly like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, one last thing I want to say about the staff was amazing. And so when I was out, I was reflecting on I had been trying to, you know, we were trying to find a location for barn that we could buy, right? And uh, we raised the money for it. And as soon as we raised the money, the Chinese virus hit. Oh. And. <laughs> We weren't able to do it, right? That's my second language. <laughs> no, I think that's my third language. My second language is hola. Galashas. Si, senor. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. That's my second language. But anyway, I was thinking, no, we got this money for barn, and I talked to my real estate, real estate person to help me find things. He like just said, I really suggest you not buy in California. He said, because these people got a hold of California right now, and it doesn't look like they're going to let you go. And if you buy a building, it's so expensive now, regulation, they don't want you to do certain things to it. They don't want you to, do, you know, they want to control everything, right? And he was, said, I suggest you look somewhere else. I'm like, wow, where else would I look? And uh, so I know that's why God hasn't allowed me to find anywhere yet, because it's a mess. This might not be the proper place for it. So we're going to see, but I don't know what's going to happen. But what I, what I was thinking about that, I was thinking about how well James and all those guys did in running this organization. So it made, it, it made me really, really want to build this uh, podcast network that I'm building. I want a 24-hour talk radio because... Like, like the children of the lie, they're always teaching the young, the next generation, how to lie and represent what they're about. Likewise, my generation should always be teaching the next generation about God and about truth and about how to overcome and to be strong because we need them to fight this lie, right? And so I realized, wow, I really am committed. The one thing I really want to enhance with Barn is this network I want to build a network of men that's going to stand up and not be afraid and not judge and just deal with it because the more popular you become, the more your enemies are going to come out the woodwork. And they seem to be doing a very good job of handling that. So I really want to build a network. Also, I want to do the counseling. I want to have a location for a barn, but I really want to see other people learning and growing and being involved. Because I mean, who knows? And we have to they used to pass on Christianity to the next generation. I did a, 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 a Fall State episode the other day, and it was with a Z. And a Z is under the millennials, right? And then I, I forgot exactly how the conversation went, but I asked, what do you think about the millennials? He like, nothing. They're no good. Something like that. You'll see the episode in a minute. So I may not be quoting exactly. But he said that the millennials have nothing to offer. They're just no good. I was like, wow. And then I asked Chris and my experts about it later, and they agreed to it. Like, I think, Chris, what did you say what I asked about? My, my generation, at least they passed down money and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I said the, the boomers are pretty bad. They, I mean, that goes without saying, but... At least they had have money. Millennials really have nothing. Uh, they don't have money. They have bad morals from the boomers. My parents are boomers, and so we're like in the redemption redemption arc. I'm hoping it will be a good one. Isn't that amazing? A whole generation of millennials are just nothing. Somebody let them down. Somebody didn't pass on the truth to them. Somebody was not an example for them. 
Because like my, the generation before me, at least they passed down love and principles of how to treat one another and work and, and all that. But this whole generation, they're weak. They have no courage. They have no insight. As Chris says, they have no money. Even the white ones don't have money. <laughs> you know, white people probably have some money. And, uh, but they have nothing. That's pretty sad when you think about it, huh? A generation have not received anything from their parents or anyone else, from their churches or anyone. That's bad when you think. And I hadn't realized the depths of it until that Z guy said it. I would interview him. Then I asked the guys, and they agreed. And it's no wonder the world falling apart. And so I really want to build a strong uh, show, radio network, because these guys got to get busy. You can't. You got. You got to return to the father. You must become a good generation because the Z needs you to be better. Your kids need you. And you will be cleaned up. God will take care of you. Don't worry about what has happened. Deal with what's now. And you'll be fine. Um, the biblical question was two weeks ago, because we didn't have church last Sunday, was should a woman be allowed to speak in the church? I thought that was such an interesting question. But it happened right at the end of that service where we really couldn't deal with it. And I made it a biblical question. Should a woman be allowed to speak in a church? Take it. <laughs> Can you circle back to me? Oh, okay. <laughs> Please. All right, right here. Thanks. Why'd you, why did you pick her? Huh? I, I raised why my did, hand. Why'd you pick her? Oh. <laughs> you said, why did I pick you? No, no, I said, why'd you pick her? I was just joking. You had a hand up. <laughs> um, at the beginning, I was thinking, and this is like a, I think it's like a personal thing more than anything. I was thinking, I know, you know, based upon like biblical things, I didn't really like, I just read like really kind of like gloss around or something. And then I wasn't, and then I just let it go. And I was uh, listening to Nick's show, or well, just Jesse's show with Nick. And there were a couple Nick of- Nick told me that he was thinking if I didn't come back by Friday, he'd go on my show. <laughs> <laughs> he did really good. He did really good. I was good. like, white people always try to steal the black man stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, and then a couple of callers, you know, was hearing people talking, and then I realized um, I do truly believe that women shouldn't be leading anything. That's How about uh, speaking in the church. Yeah, right? no leading, but like I do believe that women should speak in the, in church. Because I, this is how I see it. If you're a strong man and you're a man of God, um, you will be able to discern what she's not. If she's like you dealt with this girl that was raped a hundred times or something, um, uh. and you, you know, she was speaking, and everybody could see the evil on her. Right. Everybody, she was exposed, and yeah. everybody could see it, and everybody could also see you dealing with a woman, and you being over her, and you be like, "This is my church. You came to my church, yeah. so you cannot come here and say so." I do believe that a woman should be able to speak, express, ask questions, express, oh, this is what happened to me. Um, maybe sometimes they're going to say something crazy in trying to control the situation and power control. Yeah. But if we have a strong man, um, that, should be, that should be the order. It should be, you shouldn't be scared of a woman talking because if you're scared of a woman talking, you're weak. And you're not going to be able to go out to the world and be like, oh, yeah, we're going out of the world. This is the world. Oh, no, I don't want to go to the world because oh, this is af I'm afraid of it. No, yeah. you should be a man, a man enough to yeah. be able to discern what she's saying, put her in check. If you have to put her in check, explain if you have to explain and so on. That's Can you how imagine I had that been a, a, a woman up here and that woman came in. Oh, I've been raped seven times. Yeah. They're like, oh, let's go in prayer. Yeah. Come on down, sister. <laughs> Let's pray about this. But I, I want to make sure that I don't think women should lead. What? That's I oh, don't okay. think women should lead. That's the right. one thing. But speak, you should let people speak so you can see their evil, you can understand them, and you can check. It's up to you. You have to be the man and check it. Like, okay. you have to check yourself. You don't have to run away every time you see something. The young man behind you want to respond. Should a woman be allowed to speak? 
in the church. Yeah, it's cool. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, at least you make it simple and easy. <laughs> All right, you say yes. No. Okay, right here. Um, I want to lean towards no. <laughs> you lean toward no. Yeah, and why I mean, they definitely should no? be preaching, that's for sure. But as far as speaking in church, I mean, you know what? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, no, I, I, check, I guess I changed my mind. I guess if you take him out already, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's now, just, you, now you lean in another way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, I, I, they, like I said, they definitely shouldn't be preaching. But you know, church is like, if, if in this kind of setting, it's like more fellowshipping. So yeah, I mean, it's it's fine yet yeah, because like, men just as well as women are trying to figure stuff out, you know. Um, so and like in this type of setting, I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How you doing? I'm doing well. You dealing with anything better now? Yeah. Okay. You stay with the prayer? Yep. Every morning, every night? Can't say every morning, every night, but um, it's it's getting more frequent than before. It's what's preventing every morning? It's, the Father it's, said, "Pray without." Yeah, ceasing. believe me, I see it. I see it. I see it when I do it. Like I see when I'm praying without ceasing, and I see how much better things are. I'm able to deal with things a lot better. Um. But it's it's just these this worldly um, I guess it's like this worldly uh, concern or thoughts. It, it is thoughts at the end of the day, saying, yeah. oh, I got to get to work. I got to do this. I like, go, oh, I'll do it later. It's you're it's it's all there. I I see it all, and it's just it's just um, you know I'm getting better. Like it's I'm recognizing it now, but it's it's just a matter of like committing to letting the thoughts pass you know what I mean do you realize Satan is talking you out of doing it yeah yeah I and see it all God said yeah. to do it mm -hmm. seek me and, and you still just let him talk you out of it I yeah I, I, I guess I got it's just like sort of like building up a strength I feel like yeah you know? are you convinced yet that all thoughts are all lies all the oh, time yeah. about anything mm -hmm. uh -huh. I maybe I, I I don't know if it's a difference between con being convinced or just like I know that they are but it's I guess I'm just still not like, uh, I, I'm still building up the strength to really just, like, uh, not be affected by them. You know what I mean? You're building up what now? Strength. To, to what? To not be affected by my About thoughts. thoughts? Yeah, like, I... I but you can't, you can't fight the thoughts on your own. You can't build up strength on your own to fight darkness. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. It's not in us to do that. It's the Father that does it for us, the Holy Spirit. Right. So you can't build up strength against thoughts. Okay. It makes sense because it's spiritual. It's a spirit, right? It's all spiritual. Well, is there such thing as a weak spirit and a strong spirit? Same spirit is weaker than God's spirit, right? Other than that, that's it. I mean, you, there's not a weak spirit that you can defeat on your own. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. Believe me, that's the one thing I, I want you to really, really get to is that of ourselves we know nothing, and of ourselves we can do nothing. When you really see that, that'll help you stop trying to solve anything. Right. You have to just go through it, let it go through you. But I recommend you do it, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, I see it all. It's just a matter of committing to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. I have tended to recently define <laughs> separately between boys and girls and men and women, and, and specifically boys being any male in a fallen state and w fem girls being you know females in a fallen state and women and men being children of god so in terms of whether or not a woman well, should all speak of us church, are, are, are born in the, into the fallen state of men and women boys and girls and and i and i see that if someone is causing like a big problem and they're just like talking and won't shut up in church then they should probably be like hey Take the mic away from them or whatever, so but everyone should have the chance to say something. No oh, okay. What. So you're saying a woman should be able to speak in the church? Yes. All right. Yeah. What do you think about that, Hassan? Um, yeah, I think they should, especially if they don't have a husband or something like that. Like okay. you were saying, everyone's looking for, you know, seeking. So. Yeah. 
So you asked this question, sir, which is an amazing question. What do you think about should a woman be allowed to speak in a church? With all due respect, I'm not surprised that there's nobody in the room that has the guts to say no so far. Uh, You're the, not surprised what? That nobody in the room has the guts to say no so far. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the only person that has said no was the woman that was sitting here the last time we brought this up. Um, and, you know, it goes back to uh, the scripture, you, you know, of course, and what Paul was seeing in the world at that time. And Jesus did not speak on this topic, to my knowledge, um, because in, in Jerusalem and uh, in that area, it was still a patriarchy and, and uh, men still uh, uh, were in control. And the Roman Empire and the places where Peter and Paul were traveling, uh, that had been not the case. That was patriarchy had been falling apart. Uh, the Roman Empire had gone from being something that was uh, uh, more like a republic, which our country was based on, right, to a dictatorship with big government and women involved in leading the Roman Empire and women involved in the churches. And Paul was seeing that, and that's why Paul said the words that he said that women should not speak in church because what had been happening in the churches was first you have women speaking, asking questions, and then next thing they're on the stage. The next thing, they're running the congregation. The next thing, they're in politics. The next thing, you have all kinds of problems that you had in that culture uh, as the patriarchy was turned upside down. It yeah. leads to fatherlessness and all kinds of problems, divorce, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a really tough topic to think about, us implementing something like that in this group. I don't know any other church in Los Angeles that, that goes by uh, the scripture on this topic, right. but I think that it would be worth giving a try. Well, I totally understand what you're saying. You're right about all that. But what happened is, if you really, really, and I mentioned earlier that Christianity is almost dead. It's been watered down. Uh, the ladies as little girls and adult women are not getting that from their fathers at home. They're not being shown by example the right way to go. And so when they come here, at least they can hear the preacher say, hey, forgive, return to the Father, and God will guide you. And so if they didn't get a chance to ask here to point their way back to them, they would be lost out there really suffering. And so in this environment, as someone mentioned, this is an amazing environment where these ladies can see or ask questions that they need to know. And then once, because once they wake up, they're not going to try to usurp the church. They're not going to they're not going to see themselves as better as a man or equal to a man. They're going to see it in the right way, and they will be happy to live that life, to be a woman. So in this environment, I'm glad they do have somewhere to go where somebody will say, and that's what the church is supposed to do anyway, point you back to the Father. So if the family fail, then the church is supposed to point you back to the Father, not to the preacher, not to the deacon, not to, but back to the Father within. So that's why we just fellowship here, but we don't have women leading and all that kind of stuff. But you're right in that, what you're saying, but they have destroyed Christianity because Christianity is the best religion on this side of heaven. But a very good question, man. Yeah, I don't agree with you, but I appreciate, you know, you're, you're what in charge. What part with that you, you disagree with? Me? Well, uh, just kind of what I said before that as women. So how are they supposed to find their way if they can't ask nobody? No, I'm not saying that they shouldn't. I'm not saying oh. that they shouldn't. But within the church body, when we're gathered in a, in a formal way like this, right, that's something different. Because when the woman gets the mic, the woman's got the mic and everybody's listening. And the woman says whatever she wants to say. Oh, and that's why ask, you can correct her here when you see that she's wrong about it. But, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. But they need it. That the church is supposed to point you yeah, back to that. Yeah, for sure. Not, it's not that women should never speak, right? It's, yeah. That's not what the scripture says, that women right. should never speak. It's it, within the church body when you have this, you know, or you're doing the Lord's Supper or whatever you're doing, and that kind of formal gathering of the church, yeah. that's what Paul is saying, that women should not be elevated on that level. And yeah. It's because they were deceived and Eve was deceived. And yeah, women shouldn't even receive counseling from other women because other women are emotional too and they're going to lead you the wrong way. They're not going to give you the truth about women. Let me, I just, I got to take the last question here, then I'm done. 
We're out of time. Yes. I just want to add um, something that attracted me to come here is because your message is toward, it's geared towards men. I grew up without, with all women, right? So I never had that male figure in my life. So yeah. trying to understand how males how males are supposed to be has helped me be in here. Right on. But I agree, women should not be leading. Me be, I think the women that are here, we understand our role in the yeah. high and yeah. the order. So we respect that and we want that. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think this is the setting where we can fellowship. That's why I like coming here so I can learn. Um, but I'm still learning, you know, even my role as a woman. But I am thankful to be here. Right um, I will add that, like, even in previous churches, I didn't realize it, but men were weak because women were leading the church. They're always organizing and coming up with all these events, and the men were just, you know, just in the just back. Just like in the homes. But just like Linda said, it goes back to the men being strong and correcting us, right? So if there's yeah. an issue that the person has with what we say, why don't you talk to us and correct us if Absolutely. you don't just agree with something that we say? Amazing. So, uh, but a good question, man. Really, 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 really. Man. It's deep. I don't have a brand new one yet. Hopefully we get one uh, this week. Uh, amazing service today. I, I really, really want to encourage you to operate in faith. Not by what you see with your physical eyes at all, because it makes the mind, the eyes are seeing from the mind, and the mind is lying, right? You want to live by faith and not by sight. And that comes from within. Live from within. I, want, I, I really, really want to encourage you to do this. You got to start living from within and also pray. You got to do the prayer. You don't have to. You can let Satan talk you out of it. You can do your little hoop and holler if you want. Whatever. But uh, when you do the silent prayer, you, uh, the prayer through the prayer, through the prayer, because the prayer is not doing it, but the Father through the prayer is aligning you back up with him. He's getting rid of it, not you. You are not your thoughts. You are not your ego, all right? It's not you. It feels like it, but it's not. It's the spirit that's inside of you. That's what I tell people all the time. Now, you're not your vices. You are a son or daughter of God, but you've just been turned away. It's about the heart. Prayer is about the heart. It's not about the head. Nothing that you want to, you don't want to live by your head. You want to live by faith, all right? So I encourage you to do the prayer. And I encourage you to just have faith. Have a wait and see. Seem to tell you that the world is, your house is burning down, right? But really, your real house is being made, rebuilt. So you will be fine. Just endure. And thank you all for your prayers and your support when I was out and even now. So I am grateful. And, uh, and for those who you have put me in a uh, wherever, just come, bring me down. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and don't blame me for it. It ain't my fault. What the? It ain't dead yet. I'm sitting here with Nick, those guys were saying he's relaxing, he's fine. People didn't believe it. Well, no, we want no more. They ain't your business. I've been so nosy. And stay out of other people's business. You got your own life to take care of, all right? But do the prayer, folks. We got to make Christianity strong again. And that comes from God through us. All right? From God through us. I'll be back tomorrow for the radio and all that good stuff. Any announcement, Hermes? Women's Forum. Oh, Women's Forum. Oh, nice. Women's Forum this week. Uh, that's amazing. It's a third Thursday. Right, this month going by just like that. So the latest forum this Thursday at 7 p.m. We didn't have the men's forum, did we? No. Ooh, I bet you ladies feel better, right? <laughs> we didn't have the last one. We didn't have the last one. Ladies? Ladies or men? Oh, uh, we missed two for the ladies? Well, that's all right. Y'all ain't got to be speaking in church in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so women's forum uh, this Thursday night at 7 p.m. We have a matching donation grant of uh, $30,000. So help me get the 30000 by matching that. The guy called. Even when I was sick, they notified me, hey, Justin, we want to Help you out here. It's the end of the year time for giving. You've helped my family and I. And so I want to do a $30,000 matching grant. So he would give up to $30,000, all right? So if somebody want to write a check today for $30,000 or fifty, 
or whatever, 50,000, or a dollar, 10, or whatever. We appreciate it. Uh, we have a newsletter going out, too, so if you, if you want to receive a hard copy of it, uh, you can uh, uh, go to the website and add your address, P.O. Box, or whatever you want to come, and we'll send it to you. And it's at no cost to you. It's the end of the, of the year newsletter. And again, thank you all for praying for me. And those who are trying to kill me, thank you. I appreciate both. Because sometimes the one that pray for you is the one that want to kill you. And sometimes the one that want to kill you is the one that end up helping you. So I'm grateful. I'm back. I feel good. All is well. Oh, and I still have the pay- see, I still have a little heart monitor on. Y'all see the monitor? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so what the doctor said is that we can't find anything. Because people thought I had a stroke. I'm like, doctor, doctor, did I have a stroke? <laughs> I thought I had a stroke and didn't know it. Maybe I lost my mind and didn't see it. And like, no, you don't have no stroke. There's nothing about you to say you had a stroke. But they are concerned about the heart, so they put this little monitor on. And I have to leave it on for two weeks, which is until next Friday. And then put it in the box and mail it in. They don't have any real doctors anymore. They have assembly line doctors. <laughs> I remember when I was younger, and I would go see a doctor. The doctor would say, okay, good to meet you. I want to know about your medical history. I want to know what were you doing leading up to this incident? Were you stressed out? Were you whatever, right? And they can almost, that's 50% of the diagnosis, just from talking to you about how you were feeling and what led up. No doctor don't do that now. No doctor do do you. in, and they have the blood test person lined up, they have the heart person lined up, they have this, and you're just an assembly line. And then the doctor look at it, oh, okay, you need a pill. I'm like, but doctor, doctor, I want to talk to you. No, I'm not trying to talk, we got a lot of customers. So <laughs> medical field is messed up today. We need the good old, t- old days doctors, just like we need Christianity, that good old time Christianity. But so they couldn't find anything. So far, the monitor light has not gone on, so I must be doing well. I'm still breathing. Still alive, but I'm barely breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all. I am back. Thank you for everything. And thank you all for coming today. I totally appreciate it. Thank you very much.